Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Dead flies cause the ointment of the apothecary, that's a druggist, pharmacist, to send forth a stinking savior. Smell. So whatever this ointment is, it, it must attract flies. And when the flies get caught and die, it stinks. So does, all right, that was an illustration. So does a little, not much, a, leg, a little. A fly is a little thing. A little folly, that's foolishness. So a little folly him that is in reputation for wisdom and honor. So what Solomon's saying, here's a man who stands out. He's proper. He does right. And with his wisdom and his honor, if he gets involved in folly and foolishness, you know what? That stinks. That is an example of the church today. The church is supposed to be of wisdom and honor, and with a little foolishness, it stinks. That God says, when you read Revelation chapter 3, I'm going to vomit you out. What's the little folly of the churches? Mother's Day, Father's Day, Happy Birthday, Happy Birthday, Jesus, uh, Christmas. Go vote. A wise man's heart is at his right hand. But the fool's heart is at his left. Right hand is the strength, and right hand side of the body is where the heart belongs. Now, there are cases, medical cases, where a person has been born with the heart on the left side. That's rare. But Solomon's saying, you know what? As far as the right from the left inside the body cavity, and your heart of your emotions and your feelings, the, the man that's wise has a right. And the fool is far left. Yea, also, when he that is a fool walketh by the way, John 14, 6, Jesus says, I am the way. His wisdom faileth him. And he saith to everyone that he is a fool. When a fool walks against what God has prescribed, when a fool does foolish things, the fool exposes himself, I'm fool. We saw a guy the other day at, at the store, and he just, his dress, something wrong with him. That is not right. If the spirit of a ruler rises against thee, here is a ruler. He's in charge. He's a boss. He's a king. He's a president. He's a police. He's somebody in charge. Leave not thy place. For yielding pacifieth. You know what a pacifier does? It, it, it silences. Great offenses. That's the first time offenses shows up in the Bible. And what, what Solomon says running is guilt. And if he's come after you and Solomon's implying you are innocent when there is no need to run, stay put. Fight it out. We've done that with, with the street minute. Now we've gone off and had to check with the lawyers, but when the lawyers say, hey, you were in the right, you done right, we go right back and do what we were doing was right.
There is an evil which I have seen, so it's witness, under the sun. Again, that's the whole mode of the book of Ecclesiastes. As an error which proceeded from the ruler. We're talking about rulers. Folly, foolishness, is set in great dignity. And the rich sit in a low place. Foolishness has great fame and fortune and rise and who elegance of foolishness. And here is a, a rich man. And he's in the wrong place. It's reverse democracy. <laughs> The position is wrong. And Solomon says, I've seen it. I witnessed it. America raises up foolish people, men and women. America rises up of the great biographies taught in the school and on the television and names on the streets and names on the sidewalks and lift up this stupid person that has no value, no Probably not even mentioned in, in the Lamb's Book of Life, not known by God. We got to put him on television. We got to put the camera on him. We got to give him his time of fortune. We got to give him the headline. We got to give him the pages. We got to give him the time. And a man that honors God. Listen, where I went to the public school system, I went from kindergarten all the way to high school and graduated from high school. I never heard once about Moses. I never heard about the Pharaoh that helped Joseph and the children of Israel. I never heard about the Pharaoh that rejected God through Moses. I never heard about the wilderness journey. I never heard about the Red Sea crossing. I never heard that Israel is God's land. Never heard any of that. But boy, I heard about Michael Luther King. It's not Martin. It's Michael. It's Michael Luther. Michael Luther's got his wrong name. It seems like every city's got to have Michael Luther, his phony name, you know, Martin Luther after the Protestant reformer. But his name was Michael Luther. And we got to change all history. So. I have seen servants upon horses. Okay. And princes walking as servants upon the earth. What's the servant doing riding a horse? What's. The prince, the guy with the money, the guy, what's he doing walking? Why is it at the first of the month, I go to the grocery store, why is it the people who don't work for a living has got the full carriages of the food? And the ones that do work, I mean, she's got the coupon, she's saving, she's got to get the bolo, she, and she, she's shopping wisely with a list and, and checking it twice. And money pitching. Solomon says that's folly. It's wrong. He that diggeth a pit shall fall into it. Now, digging a pit, I mean, there's nothing wrong with digging a pit. You're digging a hole, but Solomon is also coming to the conclusion this pit is for sin. It's for error. It's for somebody for an intention to catch him. Be not deceived, God's not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth that he shall also. You're going to dig a pit for somebody, you're going to end up in a pit. Whosoever breaketh a hedge, tears a hedge down. Wrongly. Because he then says, a serpent shall bite him. God's going to get the serpent. I would assume that Ahab had to tear some, some hedges down of Naboth's vineyard, so that he got by murder from his wife. Whoso removes stone shall be hurt therewith. And that's in the law. 
That's Habeth. He's got he's readjusting the property line where Naboth says, I can't do this because the law said this belonged to my fathers. And Ahab was wrong. And Solomon tells us in the book of Proverbs that we're not to remove the ancient landmarks that were set by Joshua and the children of Israel in the book of Joshua. Now remember, Ahab and Jezebel and Naboth hasn't happened yet. So Ahab had, had the scriptures of the kings before him to know that he done wrong. He that cleaveth wood shall be endangered thereby. Justice. And he's looking to and cleaving wood for not good, not for firewood, not for wood to, to cook dinner, maybe make an idol. If the iron be blunt and he do not wet, sharpen the edge, then must be put to more strength. You will cut yourself more with a dull knife than you will the sharp knife. Because if you have a dull knife, you're going to put more force. And when you put more force, if your finger is there, yeah, you'll cut yourself with a sharp knife. But when you got to use a dull blade, you're putting more force. Solomon knew that. But wisdom is profitable to direct the way. Got you sent. Got a dull blade. Got to sharpen it. It's unwise to use a dull blade. You got dull scissors. It's smart to sharpen them. Surely, the serpent will not bite without enchantment. And a babbler, someone who talks too much, is no better. So a serpent, you know, you see them in there, they blow that little horn and the saint and all that, and they do get bit. Well, you know what? As that guy got bit for, for messing with a serpent, so is that man with the big mouth. Talks and talks and talks. The words of a wise man, mouth are gracious. But the lips of a fool who's not wise will swallow, he'll eat up his own words, He'll devour himself. And Jesus said, every idle word shall man give an account thereof. The beginning of the words of the mouth of the foolish. Revert, reversing it from to verse 12. We said the wise of the fool. I mean, the wise, the wise mouth. Now we're reversing the foolish mouth. The, the beginning of the words of, the, of his mouth is foolishness. Going back to verse 12. The start of his talk is foolish. And the end of his talk is mischievous madness. He starts off foolishness. And when he's done talking, just madness. I, you know, I deal with it. I, I deal with that with street ministry. And when you deal with somebody, and, and, and when you deal with the Jehovah Witnesses, they say, well, you know, Jesus, there's, Jesus is not God. When you get to the end of the conversation, it's just madness that you're saying everything against the Bible, holding a new world translation in your hands. I, I, I got, well, you know, people, well, you know, you ought not be screaming to people. You ought to be talking. Sir, ma'am, I do talk to people. I deal with them with gospel tracts. I deal with an open Bible. Right now, I'm dealing with a big mouth to reach a lot of massive people. What do you do? Well, let my light shine. When do you talk to people? Well, I let my light shine. Madness. You're coming to me, judging me. You know, I like to be called judge not, at least you be judged. You're judging me. You're telling me what I'm doing wrong, what the Bible says to do, and you're not doing nothing at all. You let your light shine. And so does the sun. And you get too much of the sun, you're going to get a sunburn. And do you no good? A fool, also a fool worth. Just talk, 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 talk. That's what preachers are. Didn't Paul say the foolishness of preaching? We're fools. We're always talking. 
We put our foots in our mouth all the time. But the message is not foolish. Amen. I bet you some preachers heard that right now and now they're offended. Oh. You know what your problem is? You think you you think you got everything to say and everybody needs to hear you all the time. You don't think the, the word of God, you think you're the one. I've had preaching, their church is the church of all the churches. Boy. The fool is full of, full of words. A man cannot tell what shall be and what shall be after him. Who can tell him? That fool talks and you're like, what are you saying? Where are you going with this? I got to get out of here. I got other things to do. A fool, full words, foolishness, ends with madness, and the end result. Uh -huh. I don't know. The labor of the foolish wearieth every one of them. Here's a fool at job. You know, you know what he does at his job? All his co-workers, all the people that work with him, they gotta cover for him. They gotta back up him. They gotta work double because of him. They gotta do more because of that guy. Who does it wrong, who doesn't do nothing at all, who messes it up, who's involved with alcohol, that's a fool, who doesn't do his job properly, because he knoweth not how to go to the city. What's that? That's a place of judgment. He has no sense of direction. He gets lost. Why did it take you three hours to run that paperwork? I didn't know where I was going. He's without direction. Whoa, here's a woe. Woe to thee, O land, for Solomon, that's the land of Israel. It's not America. That's not where your church property is. It's not Europe. Not Africa. Not China. It's the land of Israel, the land of Judah. Woe unto them, O land, when thy king is a child, and thy princes eat in the morning. And there were many kings that were children, young. Some of them were brought up by the high priest. And eat in the morning. I don't understand that. I mean, breakfast. Huh? Blessed art thou, O land, Israel, Judah, Jerusalem, when the king is the son of nobles. He's, he's got that bloodline. And thy princes eat in due season. So verse 16 is the princes are eating and they're eating at the wrong times. In verse 17, they are properly eating. Again, I don't understand that. I don't know all the Bible. For strength and not for drunkenness. So verse 16 would lead to us, here are a bunch of people, they're getting drunk, they're getting intoxicated. Verse 17 they're eating properly, they're eating at the proper time, and they're not getting intoxicated. And in verse 16, the young ruler, the child, can't do nothing because he has no age of authority. And in verse 17, the king, he's royal line, he, he's, he's got the authority over the princes. And in verse 16, the princes are over the king. In verse 17, the king is over the princes. You know what's wrong with American government is the Senate and the House is over the president of the United States. There are things the president cannot do without the permission of the Senate and the House. By much slothfulness, 
the building decayeth. You just don't do your work. You just don't take it. You got a leaky roof. You don't take care of it right away. You're, you got weeds in your garden, which I'm guilty of. And when you go out to the garden, you got more weeds. And when you end up not slothfulness, you got weeds on top of weeds. When I grow a garden, I don't grow up tomatoes and green beans. I grow weeds because I'm slothful in the garden. When when you got a problem in your building and you don't take care of it quick enough, it'll get bad. And through idleness of the hands, the house drop it through. That's the curse of owning property. When you put things off, you put things off, you put things off. When it comes to the maintenance of your house, your house will fall down. And if you ever see something like that again, back in Connecticut, there are old barns that are falling apart. Because at one point in time, somebody says, I'll do it later. I don't want to put the effort into it. I don't want to put the money into it. A feast is made for laughter. And wine maketh merry. Don't say alcohol. There's a wine that is fresh. There's a wine that's fermented. You can drink regular fresh wine and still be happy. The book, uh, the book of Ruth, Boaz. But money answereth all things. Now answer that to 1 Timothy chapter 6. Now, do we know that God can't be bought with gold and silver and money? So you assume that Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 19 is a contradiction because the Bible says you can't buy God up. You can't work to get saved. You can't pay to get saved. So what is Solomon saying that money answers all things? That under the sun. We're not talking about eternal life. We're talking about walking and talking and living under the sun. That on this planet earth, money can buy you briberies. Money can buy you into a corporation. Money can buy you anything. Money is the answer today in this world. It won't be that case at the judgment seat of Christ, the great white throne judgment, or in the, in the eternal life after it. Money will be nothing. But right now on this earth, money, you could be guilty in a courtroom and somebody bribe the judge or the jury. You, you can get the most paid, high paid lawyers and attorneys. And the other person don't have enough. For the attorneys. Curse not the king. Or president. Ruler. No not in thy thought. Don't even think about cursing the king. Or the ruler. And curse not the rich. In thy bedchamber. Your bedroom. For a bird of the air. Shall carry the voice. A little bird told me. Is the expression. And the birds in the Bible, Mark chapter 4, is related to the devil and to devils. When you curse the king or you curse the rich man, your boss, a little devil in the air will go tell him. God heard it at least. Behold the eyes of the Lord in every place. Behold the evil and the good. You're not getting away. Jesus said every idle word shall man give it account. And that which has wings shall tell the matter. Birds have wings. 